upon a lofty throne, I saw a man seated, whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison. Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Wow, the hearty few. <laughs> well, we'll have a good Mass together today. Our Mass today is offered for Joseph Corator, Corator, and that's for the repose of his soul. As we come together before the table of the Lord, we call to mind our need for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah rose after a meal at Shiloh and presented herself before the Lord. At the time, Eli, the priest, was sitting on a chair near the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In her bitterness, she prayed to the Lord, weeping copiously, and she made a vow, promising, O Lord of hosts, if you look with pity on the misery of your handmaid, if you remember me and do not forget me, if you give your handmaid a male child, I will give him to the Lord for as long as he lives. Neither wine nor liquor shall he drink, and no razor shall ever touch his head. As she remained long at prayer before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth, for Hannah was praying silently. Though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli, thinking her drunk, said to her, How long will you make a drunken show of yourself? Sober up from your wine. It isn't that, my lord, Hannah answered. I am an unhappy woman. I have had neither wine nor liquor. I was only pouring out my troubles to the Lord. Do not think your handmaid a ne'er-do-well. My prayer has been prompted by my deep sorrow and misery. Eli said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She replied, Think kindly of your maidservant, and left. She went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and no longer appeared downcast. Early the next morning they worshipped before the Lord, and then returned to their home in Ramah. When Elachanel had relations with Hannah, the Lord remembered her. She conceived and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. 
He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap, he lifts up the poor to seat, with, to seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to Capernaum with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of the scribes. In their synagogues was a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. And the, un the unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. Gospel of the Lord. I was really delighted last night. We went to see the symphony. It was the Civic Symphony. And they did two numbers, two pieces. The place was full. And I've never seen so many young adults at a symphony. It was quite amazing. And the first one was a, a Negro Folk Symphony by William Dawson. And it was uh, written in 1934. And it contained a lot of the African-American ethos and music in it. And I've heard it said once before that African-American, the history of black America is the history of America, because African Americans have been here since 1619 and have been uh, especially brought the genius of music, uh, which some of it was from the Negro spirituals and then it developed into gospel music and jazz music and rock and just this, the seeds of so many different kinds of music that have inspired so many different groups in America to promote to develop music, and um, 1893, we also had the new Symphony of the New World um, by, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Anton and Dvorak, Symphony from the New World, and he included some of this uh, African-American spiritual into his music, and he said at one point, there is no way to write an authentic symphony or classical music in America without including African-American music. And the word authentic really stuck with me from that. What does authentic mean? And are you authentic? Are you authentic? Am I authentic? It's a question they asked of Jesus, the question they considered. They looked at Jesus and they said, well, he teaches with authority. How is that? Because he's authentic. And what does that mean for us? I think it might mean, partly it might mean being a person of our word, that when we say we're going to do something, we do that, that uh, the way we are on the inside is what people see on the outside, kind of an authenticity of who we are. Um, any other thoughts what authentic would mean? Like saying, oh, he's the real deal. Tom is the real deal. It's 
It's all right. Feel free. <laughs> feel free to say something if you like. Feel free to not say something if you don't like. <clears throat> There's something about authentic that's very attractive, that we're attracted to a person who is authentic. It's like they're full of joy. There's a, there's a joyfulness in them. It's something that, that really draws me that, that I also want to be as authentic. Um, not a person who tries too hard, but somehow they just are who they are. You feel relaxed around that kind of person. It's the kind of person that makes you just want to talk about yourself, uh, to just be there with that person. This was... Jesus, I believe, was an authentic person in that way. He was there with people, and they could, uh, he could see who they were. You didn't have to make pretense. You didn't have to pretend with him. Uh, he was the kind of person that uh, spoke about what really was going to happen, and this was a problem for the disciples. He said, the Son of Man is really going to suffer. And people thought the authentic Messiah would be the one with power, the one that's going to come in and, uh, with armies and defeat the Romans and defeat the Jewish king and all of these things. And that's the kind of authentic Messiah they were looking for. But he was a different kind of Messiah, one who would speak truth to power, one who would not uh, mince words, one who would speak directly to you. Like when Peter said, no, that's not going to happen to you, Lord. No, you're not going to be, you're not going to suffer he said directly to him, get behind me, Satan, his best friend, get behind me, Satan, because you are speaking man's words and not God's words. People didn't understand at first what the Messiah was to be, but Jesus was clear with them that he would tell the truth regardless of the consequences. Our first reading is nice because it's about Hannah, and Hannah was a person who really, really wanted to be an authentic woman. And in those days, an authentic woman, an authentic wife had children to give to her husband. And if you didn't have children to give to your husband, you didn't quite make it as a wife. And uh, Elkiah had two wives. They had more than one wife in those days. He had two wives, and his one wife, he didn't love that much, but she gave him all kinds of children. And then Hannah, who he really loved, did not have any children for him. So was she an authentic wife? But he loved her. And she prayed and she went to the temple and she poured out her heart and she wept. And uh, Eli thought she was drunk. She was just pouring out her heart to the Lord. And she said, no, Lord, it's not that. It's that I don't have a husband to give to, I don't have a child to give to my husband. And she said, I made a deal with the Lord. And the deal is, if you give me a child, you give me a son, I will give him to the Lord as a Nazarite. Whenever we'll he even cut his hair, he's going to be in the temple, he's going to be a prophet, and I'm going to give him to the Lord. She made a deal with the Lord. Now, the, the thing that's different from us is that she kept her end of the bargain. You know how often we have a bargain with God. Oh, God, I'll do this if you do this for me, I'll do this. And, uh, well, okay, thank you, God. And then we forget to do the other part. But she did the other part. She gave the son to the Lord. And after she weaned him, she took him to the temple and gave him over. And he was trained there. She got to see him once a year with her husband. She would go and visit him. And he became the greatest prophet of Israel. He became the great prophet that was the bridge between the, the time of the it was the time of the kings, the time of the, the judges, and then the time of the kings. And he was the great bridge person that got the monarchy started with Saul and David and so forth. And so he was, uh, she was an authentic person because she did what she said she would do. She, uh, she didn't need to have a child to be authentic, but, but she did. God gave her the child. And then after that, she had five more children. So things got going very well for that family, but Samuel was a great prophet. So the challenges of the readings today, the gospel reading, uh, are we going to be the one that accepts the sufferings that's, 
that is part of our spirituality, that's part of Catholicism? Are we going to be the one that accepts the will of God and then follows through on our promises? Those are the challenges of today's scriptures. Let us stand and pray. God of mystery and grace, you are the creator of all that is good and holy. In trust we pray, faithful God, hear our prayer. Strengthen your church's support of the oppressed and voice and the voice for justice. We pray to the Lord. Increase compassion and aid for single mothers and women in crisis pregnancies. We pray to the Lord. Help us protect children, youth, and communities from violence and drugs. We pray to the Lord. And for what else would you like to pray? Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. O Holy Spirit of God, come into our hearts, support us, challenge us, convict us, guide us, and help us to express on the outside what is true on the inside. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God favor us with mercy and the fullness of redemption through Jesus our brother. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, may it become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly entreat. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us a share in his riches. For though he was from the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, it will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, make of your church spread throughout the world fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. We remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially today remember Joseph Coratori. Welcome him and all them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God the one who takes away the sin of the world, happy are we who are called to this supper. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, almighty God, be gracious, be gracious, and please to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. 
wow, I didn't even notice. All the parolas are gone. All the stars have been taken down. Isn't that amazing? It's no ordinary time now. <laughs> Christmas is over, it's ordinary time. But that's, somebody did some really good work last night, very quickly. The Lord be with you. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go forth in peace through love and serve the Lord and one another.